Greetings and salutations and thanks for clicking on the video. Today I present to you Cinnaboo. That's what I'm going to call this. If you've been watching the last few videos that I've posted, you know that I've been playing around with Cinnamon on the Ubuntu desktop. Or rather on the Ubuntu operating system, the Cinnamon desktop. Make sure I get that straight. And the last video I posted, I pretty much kind of did my own distribution of Linux or my own spin. I took Ubuntu server and installed the Cinnamon desktop on it to kind of come up with something like Ubuntu GNOME or Ubuntu Mate or Lubuntu or Kubuntu but with the Cinnamon desktop and it worked pretty well in the virtual machine if you look at that last video you'll see however um, I did have a few problems so I decided just for fun that I was going to try and do this on my laptop because I did chased down some of the bugs and I figured hey I can make this work and so I attempted to start doing that yesterday we had a big thunderstorm roll through and knocked out my internet for a while so I've actually been working on this since yesterday afternoon uh, got up this morning and started finishing it off and, uh, and did the finishing touches at about two this afternoon so this took two days um, some folks have asked me to post a video showing how to do this and I, I would like to do that except it's going to be very difficult to figure out how I'm going to do it in such a way that I can get it all recorded it takes so long to actually put all this together that I'd have to have a day that I could set aside and do absolutely nothing else while I've been working on these projects of course I have a life so I can set it up and start it doing something in the corner and then go off and do what I need to do or have dinner or make dinner or do laundry or watch TV or whatever the deal is so I'm gonna work on getting a video up I did keep notes so I know what I did and I know what works and what doesn't one of the biggest challenges that I ran into was getting the network to work when you first install Ubuntu server you set up a wired connection you have to have a wired connection to do this and then you install the desktop over top of it and then you have to go in and basically tell the Ubuntu operating system hey I don't want you to deal with the internet connection anymore I want to use a program called Network Manager which is the applet here it's the GNOME Network Manager and it pretty much shows up in every desktop distribution of Linux so that was a bit of a challenge to go find the documentation to figure out how to do that but I did and once I was able to get a wireless connection after installing the desktop then it was easy peasy after that because then I could just sit comfortably and do this because when I originally did it my router is not really in a place where one can sit and hang out uh, with a three foot ethernet cable hooked to the machine so I was kinda hunched up in a corner in my son's bedroom <laughs> but I got it done it's done and I got it to work so this is what it looks like and one of the cool things about this is this is an HP laptop uh, it's got a it's got an i5 processor in it um, there are some things that I have never been able to get to work with other distributions of Linux that for some reason when I installed all everything myself everything just worked for instance um, if you've watched my videos for a long time you might know that on this particular machine I was never able to get the Compiz zoom feature to work or just zoom and now it works there it is and the reason why you're seeing a big pointer and a little pointer that's just how the screen capture software works with this but I'm only seeing one pointer and as I move around the screen so I was able to get that to work which is very nice to have that always worked on my other computer no matter what distribution I was running but not on this one and this is the first time I've ever been able to make it work there were a couple of things that I ran into that were kind of interesting lessons I learned the hard way like if we go into accessories here you'll see that we have two programs called files well cinnamon uses the Nemo desktop or the Nemo file manager and it looks like this and then it also uh, Ubuntu by default uses 
Nautilus, which looks like this, and they're both just called files. If you remove Nautilus from the system and just want to use Nemo, you run into some issues. Now, there is some code that you can hack to make Ubuntu use Nemo exclusively, but after I do that, I still don't know whether it's going to be compatible or not, so therefore I'm not going, I'm just going to leave them both in. I don't mind. I kind of like having them both around. When Cinnamon first creates the desktop, it does not create all of the familiar folders that we're used to, so you actually have to tell it to do it, or you have to create them manually. So that's one thing that was different. You don't get any wallpapers by default, so you have to download something or import some pictures in the machine and, and choose them. That's fine. Um, and there is still, and I've looked all over the place trying to figure out how to eliminate this, and if you go into administration, Well, actually, let me do a, a search for it. We'll do a search for soft. You'll see you end up with two links to software and updates. I don't know why. They both go to the same thing, but there they are. No biggie, though. And that's only when you search for them, by the way. So it, it's just got it in two places. So there's some little things that if I really, really, really wanted to polish this, I could probably go through and figure all that out. But to tell you the truth... I'm not going to mess with it much because this works and it took me a while to get all the software installed. That's another thing that's interesting about doing this is the fact that you you may think you understand how your Linux distribution works and the workflow that you have and all this stuff. You really learn it when you have to go and pick every piece of software that the machine runs. And not only that, you have to figure out what order to install them so that you have all the dependencies. Because if you get it out of order, then one thing might not work the way you want it to. It's, it's really wild, man. And I never knew all this stuff. Now, this leads me to something that a couple of people have said, and then I'm going to wrap this video up. They have said, well, why don't you package this up and redistribute it? And that is not entirely out of the question, and it's something that I'm definitely going to keep in the back of my mind. Number one, I'd have to have a lot of people who are interested in running this to do it. It's really, it's really not that revolutionary. It's just Ubuntu with a different desktop. I didn't really change a whole lot about the system. Really, what's significant about it is what's not here, okay? Because a lot of the crap that Ubuntu comes running in the background, I never installed, nor will I install. I don't need it. So, therefore, it does make the system rather snappy. But I actually started to look into it a little bit, and I did some research. And one of the things that is going to be a stumbling block to redistributing this as its own distribution is the fact that if you are going to be GNU general public license compliant one of the things that you have to do is you have to make the source code for every piece of open source software that is in your distribution available somewhere whether that be a pay now in, in our case with this Cinnaboo thing that we're working on everything comes from somewhere else it's all upstream I'm not adding any software I didn't write any code but you still have to make that source code available so therefore you have to have a web page that's dedicated to it and somebody would have to go through and figure out how all that legalese works so yes the open source software is free to use it's free to re redistribute and yes you can change it and you can make it your own as I have done here however if I were going to redistribute it in any way, then I would have to, there's certain things I would have to do, or I could be in trouble with copyright infringement. I know that sounds weird, but it's the truth. And that's just how the GNU general public license works. 
And if you want to know more about that, I think the person that you need to talk to is Linus Torvalds, <laughs> because he has a lot to say about the uh, GNU public license. Okay, so anyway, that this is Cinnabu, gang. This is what it looks like. Pretty basic. And this machine is done. All of the user accounts are created for everybody in the family. It's all here. All of the games are installed for the kids. All of the software I use on a daily basis is here. All of my files are copied back into the machine. And we're going to keep this one for a while. It's not going to change. Um, I actually feel a little bit more secure running it as a server. There's some security things going on in there. Like I was talking about getting the network to work well. Did you know that when you install Ubuntu, Ubuntu server, it sets a policy that no user on the machine can change the settings? <laughs> I was like, wow. Okay, so how does this work? Okay, I had to go figure that out to be able to change the network settings. So it was, it was pretty cool. So anyway, gang, uh, thanks for looking at the video. I sure do appreciate it. And everything works exactly the way it's supposed to. I get multiple desktops. Um, I can remove desktops that I don't need, which I want to do here. I want to get that down to two. Um, everything does exactly what it's supposed to do as far as how the Cinnamon desktop works. And it's running on a really solid core. I mentioned in my last video that this is running on kernel 316, which is getting all the security updates. I couldn't be happier. This is my uh, OS for my laptop. Now my main machine is going to remain standard Ubuntu 1404 just with the, de the Cinnamon desktop on top of it. Uh, that machine's very complicated and doing what I did to that machine, what I did with this machine would be a big pain, believe me. So I'm going to let them run just the way they are. Anyhow, I've rambled on long enough. Comments, suggestions, always welcome. Please check out easylinux.com if you'd like me to get you started with Linux or help you along. Sure would appreciate it. So talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching.